Hey, what's going on, people? This is a quick video. Just gonna let you know some of my opinions on when you go to a garage sale and you get something really valuable, something super nice, really cheap. Some people feel that's unethical. share with you something that I did and I was a complete dumbass when I did this years ago I'm a little crooked I'm still a little crooked but I don't care if I don't mind it doesn't matter but it is years ago went to a garage sale of a friend and since it was a friend I was pointing out what they had what it was worth what they could do with it, you know, trying to help them out, trying to be that good person. They had a lot of valuable things. Things that I could have sold and made a lot of money, easily. But I'm trying to be the good guy. So I tell this person what they have, where they can sell it. A few weeks ago, not a few weeks ago, a few weeks go by, and I uh, run into this person, and he tells me that some guy came to the house the day after the garage sale, made him an offer of 500 bucks for all of the stuff, and he took it because he didn't want to go through the effort of properly selling it, and he sold stuff. It was worth about $3,500 to $4,000 for $500 cash on the head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this was someone that was schooled. This was someone that was giving the proper information. They were told what it was worth, where to sell it. Now, if I had taken it upon myself to take the stuff, put it in the proper sales channels and sell it for the person and take a minuscule cut you know maybe sell it they get 80 I get 20 maybe I get 30 they get 70 percent oh yeah that would have went down all day long the reason that they have it and they don't know what the price is they didn't do the research if you say you don't know the value of certain things and you said that 1982 when you had to go look in the book you had to go to the right person I go okay you say that anytime after 2000 you're full of crap you can find the price of damn near anything online and if you can't find the price you can find someone who knows the price within a matter of mouse clicks it's not that hard. What I'm telling you is, it's not unethical to take advantage, and yes, yeah, what you're doing, you're exploiting an opportunity for profit. That's exactly what you're doing. I'm not one to miss words. You haven't done anything wrong. You just was someone that did their research or was involved in business, and you know the price of certain items. I can walk into a garage sale and see stuff with no value immediately. It's because I've sold the stuff before. I've been through that. There are some people that feel that having knowledge that you earned, or as a castle and addicts is fond of saying, buying your education, that somehow it is unfair. It's not right. It is not something that good people do. And I laugh at this mindset because I don't see it as my responsibility to educate and make someone a profit on an item that they own and for some reason 
they did not do their due diligence. You cannot say in 2013, you don't know the price of you. No, you chose not to investigate. And there are people just like, it's unfair, it's unethical, they're taking advantage of people. Uh, my best video on how to find gold at a garage and estate sales. There's a lot of people that said that's wrong. You should go to this, the sale and say, hey, you got some gold? Well, this is the spot price and this is where you sell it. You have a nice day. I am not that person. I'm not. Never have been. Now, what would be unethical if I saw this person walking this, down the street and as they were walking, their chain fell off of their neck and then I picked it up. That would be unethical. That is thievery. And that actually happened. I saw that and I was like, excuse me, miss, your chain fell. Here you go. But I walk into a dynamic situation where they're selling stuff and I ask them what the price is and they give me a price and that price is 95% less than what they could get for it in the proper sales channel. That is not my problem. It's not my issue. It's not unfair. It's not trickery. It's not taking advantage of anybody. It's taking advantage of an opportunity because they had every opportunity to learn the value of that stuff. To give you an example with something that happened years ago. Went to a garage sale, spent about 500 bucks, a lot of nice stuff. And me being the person I am, I was like, hey, do you have anything else that you're willing to sell? And they were like, yes. It was toward the end of the sale and the lady took me to the basement. Basement was full of grandmother's stuff. Right there, front and center, was a Duncan Fife table set with not four, but six chairs in awesome condition. Awesome. And I walked in and I went, oh. uh, and she didn't see that. So I played it cool. She showed me the stuff that she wanted to get rid of, which was also nice. And I said, what's your price for that? And are you selling the table? And her exact words was, oh yeah, 50 bucks, you can take that. And by unethical, I asked her her price. And she gave it to me. I, and I was never one of those people when I was getting a sweetheart deal like that that would haggle for extra. I was never that guy. I was already getting the deal. There was no reason to just take my thumb and dig it into the side of their neck for a few more shillings. So I came back, paid her the money. I, I threw the money at her. I, I'm not going to lie. I threw the money at her. And I went back and got it. My partner couldn't believe it. It was, it was just that nice. And she just wanted it wrong. You know, from, I think she made about 900 bucks from me that day. She was happy. I gave her her price. And I sold that table set for 2,500 bucks. Other stuff, I mean, I made way more money than what I paid her. And that's the deal. As a hustler or someone, you have to. Because the fact that people are talking about this and it's taking advantage tells me a few things about a person who says these things number one these people don't really have a lot of things in life and when I say things I'm not talking about money or things I'm talking about experiences because when you have a lot of experiences invariably in your life you will come across this conundrum you'll go through this and you'll have to talk to yourself and you'll have to deal with it if every time you was like, it's unfair, it's unjust, it tells me that this person doesn't have a lot of experiences. Because as a business owner, I think radically differently than I did when I was an employee. Because the experiences of being a business owner dictates a different response to how I deal with the business world. If I continue to think like an employee, as a in a business owner position my business would be out of business very soon because an employee thinks about PTO what time do I go get off how soon can I get a raise a business owner thinks about things such as equity and how to improve margins and how to improve market reach and how to improve market penetration it's a totally different mindset but that comes from experience. 
and every person that was an employee that became a successful business owner made that transition. They had to. So if you're thinking that going to a garage sale and getting something for a screaming deal is somehow unethical, I say to you, sir or ma'am or Fido the dog, that your experience tank is woefully deficient. Because if you had enough experiences, you wouldn't think like that. This isn't about tricking people, stealing their stuff. This is saying, hey, how much do you want for that? And they give you a price that makes you giggle on the inside because you know you can get 10 times that. It's the way it is. And like I said, a lot of people think there's something wrong with that. And the fact that we keep having this argument, and it goes back to, am I my brother's keeper? In times of crisis, I would say, yeah. You know, we were all pinned down by Al-Qaeda, and we had to, like, band together to get out of that situation. But in a normal none wartime, none urgent, extant emergency circumstance? Mm, I don't know. Because going back to my example, I've done that more than once. I've helped out people with this stuff. And even with the proper knowledge, they still sold it cheap because they didn't want to deal with the hassle of selling it in the proper marketplaces. This is common. This is common. Totally, totally common. And I'm just really surprised because there's another article about it and how, you know, it's unethical. And I just laugh. And the reason I'm doing this video is I recently came across some stuff at a sale that was just sweet. Sweet. And I paid 250 bucks for it. I flipped that stuff for three Gs to someone I knew. Who's going to make even more money? Don't care. Because I wasn't even supposed to be there. And I just saw it and I asked them what they wanted. They paid me. I mean, they gave it. I paid them. They gave it to me. And that same day, I flipped it again. So, what is this thought process? I want you to help me understand what kind of person thinks like this. Because... I don't believe in predatory lending. I don't, because I hear this stuff, right here in Atlanta, this happened not too long ago. Jermaine Dupri put up his catalog, and that's this whole book of songs that he owned that's worth about 20 million. He put it up as collateral for a $5 million loan. Well, he defaulted on the loan. And when they were going to take the catalog, he screamed, the banker took advantage of him because he didn't have a high school education. And I started laughing. You went ahead and put yourself, in my opinion, a very bad loan because you needed money. Because based on some stupid other decisions, like trying to court and date a woman that has a net worth that's like 100 times bigger than yours. You, you spent your money poorly. So you had to go out which was a bad decision, then you had to go out and make another bad decision. And then when the candle of your fame went dim, you didn't have the money to pay it back. You want to scream that you were taken advantage of. Yeah, you weren't taken advantage of. Tidal Pond, all these places, I mean, they tell you. I mean, if you can't do math that you do a $500 loan and you look under this paper, paperwork and they say you're paying 2,500 bucks back, you boo-boo the fool. It's telling you in black and white that, hey, the big penis in the sky is here on this paper. And then the minute you turn your back, shoo, it's there. I mean, in this day and age, you go out and get a loan. All you do is go to Google. and I mean, you can put in this. Like, say you want a credit card. You can put in whatever credit card you want and say, what FICO score do I need to get this credit card? And you will be directed to a forum that will tell you the low score that you need because you know if you got 720 you're pretty much getting everything you want i don't everything 720 you know it's like the thing goes up to 800 and something 720 is still seven you got 720 you're getting everything that you apply for until you reach your income level saturation point your income level exposure point and you know just for those of you that don't know say you make twenty thousand dollars a year 
and you already have twenty thousand dollars worth of credit you're not going to get any more credit even if your score is 750 because banks now are actually taking that into account after the crazy wild days of the 80s when a person can go out and get a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage on a statement loan just you know they, you know st stated income can't do that anymore so understand you know i don't believe in low-income housing and i get a lot of flack about that because i think as a person the urge the desire to live where you want to live should be the overriding concern i don't want someone to build some low-income housing for me don't want that i want to create a product service or whatever that gives me the income to live wherever the hell i want to live that's how I look at it. That's why, you know, I was saying this recently in mixed company and people are like, oh, you're a Republican. It's like, I've been a Republican since I was 11 years old and it's just that stuff never made sense to me. It just doesn't. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, you don't care about people. And all of this is going into that whole taking advantage of thing. When you have more access to information at your fingertips, literally, than you ever had before, and you fail to engage yourself with that information, the fault is yours. I remember when I was a kid, you had to go to the library, you had to know the Dewey Decimal System, you had to talk to that little quiet lady that was like, it wouldn't let you take certain books out the library. You couldn't even take them out of a certain area. You couldn't check those books out, those repositories of information, you couldn't check them out. You had to sit there, take notes, and get the information there you had to get up get out go to the library sit you had to put forth a tremendous amount of effort to get certain information it's at your fingertips now it is literally at your fingertips all you have to do is learn how to become very proficient with search and research you can find out anything it's just a matter of doing your due diligence and paying attention and having some level of an attention span because I look at certain things like you know take predatory lending laws because you know all of this kind of falls under the same arc of you know if you have information actually no it doesn't because when you do these loans or you involve yourself in situations like Jermaine Dupri did there was something called a contract that spelled out all of the things that were going to happen like if you make X amount of payments at a certain point the loan was going to be satisfied if you did not make the payments they were going to come and take the catalog all this stuff was explained whereas when you go out to a garage sale or some type of storage auction or some situation where you have the ability to buy something at the incredibly low price that you can flip it and make substantial partner profit I don't see anything wrong with that. I really don't. I just never did. I did that as a kid. And then I think it comes under the fairness doctrine. Life is not fair. And I will say that I'm really glad that it's not. I am glad life is not fair. If life was fair, I never would have wrote a book that made me $62,000 in 11 months. If life was fair, if life was fair, I never would have bought a unit for a dollar and damn near made, you know, a hundred grand over a period of time. If life was fair, just like life can be unfair to you in your mind for things that you deem adverse, unsavory, things you don't want, things you don't want to feel, it can also tilt the other way in your favor. And that's what a lot of people mess up on. They're looking at only the downside and not the upside of life not being fair. I am happy life's not fair. I am tremendously giddy that life's not fair. Because if life was fair, we would all be earning the same level of money. We all be dressing alike. We'll all be earning or eating the same things because everyone would be fairly treated everyone would have the same everything because that's fair there would not be someone who is worth 50 billion dollars there wouldn't be any poor people 
There wouldn't be. Everybody just be like, blah. Just, you know, this is how it is. And, you know, I think there would be a war on because of the boredom. I, I really do. That's just me. Just me. I know some of you are like, yeah, I would like it like that. And everyone was the same. Everyone got the same results. Everyone got the same everything. I don't believe in that noise. I do believe that in this journey called life, when you educate yourself, when you take chances, when you push forward and certain rewards come your way, that's an awesome thing. That's an awesome thing. That is sweet. But if you're stuck on the unfairness doctrine, it's usually because you made a lot of bad decisions or you had a lot of bad outcomes. And I'm not talking about someone who was sick or someone who got cancer and none of that stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you were making a lot of money and you did not save a penny. I'm talking about when life was good, you didn't prepare for rainy days. I'm talking about that stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Because when you have abundant resources, you need to squirrel some away or turn those resources into assets. But many people live only for today and only for the moment. And that's why when things go sideways, and in life, everyone's going to experience some things where it's going to go sideways. It's just going to happen. And then this is where it's unfair. It's unfair. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not. Yeah, the whining begins. So. Just my views, just uh, some that came to me because I was talking to a client today. And I was just like, yeah, because this noise will continue on. It will definitely continue on. People will continue to have this mindset of fairness because they want it to be fair. Because that doesn't that means they don't have to work as hard as they should. Because when life's not fair and you get handed some ugly, unsavory meat on your plate and it leaves a raw taste in your mouth, it's two things that's going to happen. You're going to just begin to accept rancid meat or you're going to say, no, that's not good for me. And you're going to start improving your game, stepping up your game where you're eating whatever you want to eat, doing that thing, living your life that way. Because understand, life is a choice totally is a choice all right this is glendon cameron and if you like this video you need to go ahead and hit that mailing list so you can get more stuff like this and some other killer deals and i'll see you on the good side